Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. I am feeling so enriched. I'm feeling elated. I'm feeling great to hear so much about Raj Kapoorji, somebody I met once in a, in, in a party after coming to Mumbai and always cherished that meeting. And today to hear so much about him, actually I had so much to share with you, but most of it has already been talked about, unfortunately. Um, so um, um, I will say a few things that I think we've not addressed yet. So Raji, um, because he was a common man, played a common man, I would rather say, was loved by all across the world because of that. Because every man, every woman from that strat of society could identify with him, felt close to him, felt like he was one of them. He was a star, but to them he was not a star. To them, he was like my friend, my buddy, my neighbor. And that is the special quality that Chintuji was talking about and saying that, you know, what it was about my father, that is what it was. It was being that next door neighbor that made him accessible, uh, close to people, close to their hearts, and all the social topics that he picked up. He was an amazing man because he could incorporate entertainment into a social message. You know, to, to, to have all the beautiful songs in the, his films, um, to have glamour, um, beautiful uh, dancing, everything. And yet, at the end of the film, he was able, able to convey a message to, to the people, to the audience. And that, that message is what touched them, held them close to him, and always made them remember him. A little incident, I know everybody talked about it, but I was um, um, in Uzbekistan for a film festival a few years ago. And um, since we could not speak the Russian language, we all had translators. So I had this female translator who uh, came to me and said, Aapko wo gana aata hai? And I said, Konsa? And she said, Mera juta hai Japani. And I smiled and I said, Haan, kisko nahi aata? Anybody who's Indian would know that song. So that was Raj Kapoor. I mean, um, these, the Russians had actually learned Hindi because they enjoyed Hindi films. And they only knew Raj Kapoor and they only knew his songs. So that is the power of, of entertainment. That is the power of a great actor, a great director, a great producer. And Raj Kapoorji was all. So I am so happy today. Um, that I am going to be introducing the Raj Kapoor Awards for Excellence in Entertainment. But before I say goodbye or bye and move away, I would like to say that nobody talked about Raj Kapoorji winning so many awards. Did you know that he won 11 Filmfare Awards? He um, had two national awards. He won uh, the Padma Bhushan Award and the highest in entertainment, which is the Dada Saab Phalke Award. Now that is a lot to achieve. Also twice nominated in the Cannes Film Festival in those years. So that is really a lot of acclaim, a lot of achievement uh, for one man. And I absolutely salute him. I'm so glad, so happy to be here and to be the one to announce this award. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Leading on, we have with us our partners who have supported us in this cause and worked with us to make this day possible. Mr. Victor Hugo Orozco, an economist with the Development Impact Evaluation Initiative of the World Bank's Development Research Group. May I please uh, request Mr. Victor Hugo Orozco from the World Bank DIME Initiative to share a few words during this uh, momentous occasion. Hi, well, I'm definitely out of place. I'm a researcher at the World Bank. Um, but I'm from Mexico, a land that produces also a lot of movies, a lot of soap operas. And um, it, it's a real pleasure to see how, despite our cultural differences, humanity is the same. Uh, I've seen some of uh, Kapoor's, Raj Kapoor's movies and and reminds me a lot our superhero back home, Pedro Infante. And uh, so 
the influence that these type of movies have in societies is immense, right? It changes our, our perception of what's normal, what's right, what's a, a, w what should we aspire to, right? And every generation has someone or, or a group of people that do it, and it's great to see the different generations uh, here today. Um, the World Bank Research Department is doing evaluations about how this type of productions, how um, entertainment education can actually change behavior change, social norms, um, to, to, to make a world a better place. So uh, it, it's a true pleasure to be working with Vinta and, and some of our, our, our work. Uh, we're doing similar work, uh, research in, in other entertainment hubs like Mexico, India, sorry, Brazil, uh, Nigeria. So, well, it, it's a true honor to be with uh, the professional storytellers, those who touch the heart and, uh, and with that change our attitudes, our behaviors. Thank you. Thank you, Victor. Our next guest is Ms. Kate langrill Folb, who's the Director of Hollywood Health and Society, a program at the University of Southern California, Annenberg, Norman Lear Center, that provides entertainment, ed entertainment industry professionals with accurate and timely information for health and climate change storylines. Thank you for uh, joining us, Kate. <coughs> May I now invite Ms. Kate for our strong partner and uh, guide to kindly share a few words on this historic occasion. Hi, everyone. I feel out of place, too. <laughs> um, and I realize now I have a lot of binge watching to do. And I think it'll take the rest of my life to, to see all of those films. Um, so I'm a director of a program at the Norman Lear Center, Hollywood Health and Society. And Norman Lear, uh, some of you may know, is a very prolific television producer in Hollywood. And he created television shows uh, starting in the 70s and through the 80s. And he's still producing television today. He's 95 years old, and he's got two new shows on the air in the US. And well, one's on Netflix, so you can catch it as well. Um, but he, uh, the reason our center is named after him is because he used his platform, which was primarily comedy, uh, comedy television shows, to really uh, change social norms or challenge sh social norms and address certain topics that were very hot button topics in the US in, at that time and still are, like racism, sexism, of course, health and uh, the Vietnam War at the time and so forth. And so uh, our project, Hollywood Health and Society at the Lear Center, works with television and screenwriters um, to help them craft their stories um, for social change. And we don't, we don't tell them what to write, we just offer our services. Um, five years ago, the uh, Bill and Melinda Gates Foundation awarded us a nice hefty grant to bring the work that we were doing in Hollywood to Bollywood and to Nollywood, Nigeria. And so that's how we were able to partner with Vinta and ACEE to form the Third Eye, which is a program here in Mumbai to work with the entertainment industry here, again, to offer services. And you heard Vinta's description of it, so I won't go into, into detail again. But we're delighted after five years, the progress that the program has made, um, and we look forward to seeing it continue to grow and uh, to offer its services to the uh, entertainment industry that just seems to keep growing and growing and growing. We were talking before uh, today about uh, just the amount of content that's out there. Um, okay, I'm, I'm just gonna do a little humble brag. Uh, <laughs> my cousin, my first cousin, was the actress Joanne Woodward, who was awarded the very first Oscar for Best Actress in 1958. And if you visit Hollywood and you've seen the stars on the Walk of Fame, you know, with the stars' names, hers is the very first one at Hollywood and Highland, right at the beginning. Um, and underneath hers is a time capsule, actually, which is another story. Anyway, Joanne Woodward. Um, 
who was married to actor Paul Newman. So I have a little connection with some of old Hollywood, uh, which I can not relate to what you guys are, but it, in a very small way. But at any rate, it's a kind of a proud thing in our family that uh, my cousin won the first Oscar that was ever uh, given out. And um, it was in a room very much like this. It was very casual. The dress that she wore to accept her Oscar, she made herself on her sewing machine. Uh, not like the Oscars today, right? Um, but so it, it, it makes me very happy to be part of the, the first annual Raj Kapoor Awards because if you look at the Oscars, you can just imagine we, where the Raj Kapoor Awards are going to evolve to. So thank you for allowing me to be here and congratulations to all our honorees. We thank Ms. Kate for her inspiring words. Thank you, Kate. And uh, finally, the reason why we're here, to unveil the Raj Kapoor Award for Excellence in Entertainment. Raj Kapoor, the quintessential showman of post-independent <coughs> India, is a rare filmmaker in the history of Indian cinema to have placed mainstream and popular entertainment, which he created and produced in a contemporary social context. Today, as a tribute to his legacy, as well as the tremendous talent that has flowed from his family over the next three generations in the last 50 years, we are instituting this award in Raj Kapoor's name. <laughs> 